Okay, so it looks like underneath a couple of these, it looks like the J7. There's a hidden fastener there. You can see that the antennas here are labeled all these cryptic letters. I must admit they got a, a little bit cute here with all these labeling. So I have the cheat sheet. Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, I have a Verizon home internet cube gateway and I wanna open it up and show you how you can take it apart and get access to antenna ports that you can use to then put a external antenna on. And now something to note here is there are two different gateways that have the exact same outer shell. You have to look on the bottom of it and on here for the SKUI, this one has ARC as the starting letters versus ASK. And so that's the ASCII one is the older cube. This newer cube is a Arcadian and it's a dash XCI55AX. So that is this one, I have taken apart the other gateway and it does not have U.FL connectors that you can use to install external antennas. So I've already proven that we can't do with that one. This one appears to have the ability to, but no one that I know of has tried it, so I'm here to try it today. So let's take this apart, we'll look inside, looking at the FCC documents, it looks like this has like, I think seven or eight cellular based antennas on it. Yeah, so it's going to be fun to figure out uh, which ones to use for an external antenna and maybe it depends on which band you have or what your focus is if you want to be on uh, a band that gives you better upload or something you know maybe you pick different ones so we'll have to figure that out after we get it all apart so let's just start right away and take it apart and then see what steps to take next and i'm going to take a minute to just do a shameless plug please like the video Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon if you find this stuff interesting. Thanks. All right, so with this case being very similar or the same as the other one, I know how it basically comes apart, I think. And that's to get this top cover off first. You can see it's actually a different piece than the side panel. So you can use a um, flathead screwdriver. Obviously, when it's metal versus plastic, the metal is going to win. So you want to be careful with it if you do use a metal object to really get in there. What I found is the corners are the most important. So just find yourself a corner that you can, you know, press on and try to uh, get in there. And just know that you might do a little bit of a marking on it. Alright, so once I get that first corner off, then the rest of it comes off much easier. So I find if I get in there and then you rotate it down, that disengages the clip. So you want to pull the side panel away from the top. So you can see in here, these clips are what hold it in. So, you know, it's roughly uh, four of them. You know, there's one in each corner that's in there, and then there's uh, two in the middle here. So that's where you want to ideally place, uh, place the flathead screwdriver. And so I first have to get this corner out. It's already loose. So roughly, um, you know, a third the way over, you go in here, try to get your screwdriver in there. And there we go, so now it pops out. And you can see here, these are the clips that you have to get disengaged on there. But it does come apart without breaking. You know, I did put a couple um, little Mars. Here's the first one, you know. So I, I did damage this one up slightly with using the screwdriver, but I don't think that's a, a big deal, or a deal breaker. All right, and so this is where we do see a little bit of a difference between this one and the other one, and you can see here we have a couple screw heads here that I think is used to take it out. This also shows you how large this fan is. 
you know, this one is a 0.14 amp, you know, and then I think it runs off of 12 volt power. So that's the fan you can see blows air right out of the top. So let's get this guy taken apart. I think it looks like we'll probably take these white ones out first. All right, so once I have those three off, let's see if this will slide up. All right, so they, those did not allow me to take it all apart, so I'm gonna get this black one here in this corner. Okay, so it looks like underneath a couple of these, it looks like the J7, there's a hidden fastener there. All right, the J0 also has a fastener there. And then there's one under this J4 as well, so I'm gonna take those out. All right, so now for the base of it, this is a little bit tricky, but I go in here and you can see a couple of these places that give you a place to pry from. So it looks like if you're reading the internet gateway part here on the right side, you can go in these two places here. And um, that's where I was able to pry up on here to get this off. So that was needed in order to pop this case off and get it to release from the black part. So once I have that, I can just carefully, since I have some of these loose here, I can now slide it up. All right. So, yeah, so this base here just has these little clips that slide down. So it looks like the only ones I really needed to take off were those three white ones. And then the rest were... Um, not needed to take off at least just yet um, it's just the case would not release itself uh, without a little bit of prying from the base of it so now we have this fancy guy and what's really cool about it is it is all laid out here and looks like we have all these UFL connectors we have lots of them so now the trick is to figure out which ones of these. Let's see how many we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then on here we have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Jeez. All right, so I count at least 13 U.FL connectors on here. And yes, it looks like I did not need to take off any of these screws that were underneath um, these hidden pieces of tape or underneath the little antennas up here. So now these antennas are all labeled. If I look at the FCC documentation, it has some information here as far as what these labels are, where do they go to as far as which port they go to on here, and then also what frequency or band that those antenna ports are for. So if we look on here, it's kind of hard to see with all the cables. You can see this top one though, it says J7. So I know that one is J7. If I go up here, I can see, you know, J7 is one of these ones I had popped off. So that one I know I don't have to even figure out the wire gets all hidden and tucked in there. But these are the U.FL connectors that you can take and you can gently pop them off and you can replace, you can leave this one in place. Let's just pop this one up. You want to try to make it come uh, vertically straight up and off of the the board there. You know, if you break one of these, it is not my fault. It is your fault. <laughs> so um, do be careful with the way these works. They have a little tiny center pin that goes in there, and then they have the round ring. And on the cable side, it has the round ring, and the center pin goes in that little hole in there. And that's where the um, the two connectors um, are so this is how we do it so now what we need to do is hook up one of those antennas and start messing with which one of these 
ports is the most important to get us the best speed. All right, so you can see that the antennas here are labeled all these cryptic letters. I must admit they got a, a little bit cute here with all these labeling. So I have the cheat sheet. This is actually from the FCC documentation, but so they have a connector label and then they have an antenna label. So the antenna label is the one that is here in the white font and these little black rectangles, those are the antennas actually. And so I can see here that for some of them, like J-O, that antenna label is also a J-O on the connector label. So the connector labels are over here on these uh, boards that have the U.F.L. connectors and basically to the left of the um, connector is that label. So that uh, that aligns with the connector label. And so for some of these, like J1 here on the connector label, that goes to J1C right here on the antenna. So that's how, that's my first step is to try to figure out what each antenna is and what is the corresponding U.F.L. connector on there. And now only some of these are for the cellular. The other ones are for Wi-Fi, for Bluetooth, and for um, GPS, I believe. So those ones, obviously, we don't care about from a cellular standpoint. It looks like there are eight connectors for the cellular modem stuff. All right, and so basically, the long story short is the side with just the five connectors that is for the ones we don't care about. That's the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, and GPS over here. And now the this side here with all of these eight connectors, this is the cellular modem stuff. So this is crazy. If you follow the channel, you know the Nokia gateway from T-Mobile has four connectors. And they're labeled L1, L2, L3, and L4. And it's pretty easy to... Um, keep those in, in mind. For the Arcadian one for T-Mobile, they have six connectors, but by stock form, they only use four of them. So this is the first time I've had eight connectors to deal with. And if you have a two by two antenna, you're only gonna use two ports. So you have to determine which two ones are the best. And if you have a four by four, obviously you use four ports. Now, I don't think anyone really wants to buy uh, a four or two four by fours where you use up all eight. So let's go in here and try to figure out which of these connectors actually matter to us for an external antenna. All right, so now I have this cheat sheet from the FCC documentation. And I can go straight down here to the WAN antenna information page. And I can see what's kind of unique is that the antennas are labeled uh, one through seven here, not zero through seven so i'm not exactly sure what that means but we can look here and we can see that some of these are monopole and some are dipole and then next we can go down here to the note and they actually test these antennas and see what kind of reception they get for different bands so what i can see here is uh, 5g nr n77 band for verizon that is their c band and so that's the one that i most concerned about because that is the best 5G band that this guy can pick up. So that looks like it is antenna 6 and 7. So I believe that would mean we have J6 and J7 on this board as my top two ones to try out. Okay, so those seem like good ones to try. And then if I want to look at another pair to play with, it looks like antenna 1 has several of the LTE bands as well as some of the other 5G uh, bands N5 and N66. So that N1 seems like a good one to try. And then, you know, perhaps looking at number five would give you the other LTE bands as a, as a monopole connection. So I think to me, for sure, six and seven are the ones I'm going to try. And then one and five are my other thoughts to try. And the only, only way to find out, I think, is really to plug it in and, um, and see. Now, 
you can obviously look into your area like on cellmapper.net or using your phone especially if you have a Verizon phone and you can see you know which bands you pick up and which ones are available for you and obviously if one of these antennas is geared towards a band that you don't have available then it's probably not worthwhile plugging that one in you would want to pick a band that you have in your area to pick up so next up we need to try these out all right so i have a waveform 4x4 panel antenna and a waveform 2x2 panel antenna that i've done testing with before on t-mobile gateways and so i'm going to try those out here on this gateway i'm going to try just a 2x2 to see if that's all you need i'm going to try out the 4x4 and then probably because i have it and why not i'll try out the 4x4 and the 2x2 both connected up to here to see what kind of speeds i can get now right now i get about 240 megabits per second down it varies a little bit but that's about my average and then my upload is somewhere around 15 maybe 20 uh, for my upload and I get somewhere around three bars I would say sometimes I get uh, two on LTE and three on the um, 5G and then sometimes I get three on LTE and four on 5G so I average about three bars so I don't have full signal so I would like to think that the antennas could help me. So we'll find out here in the next video just what kind of performance I can get out of these antennas and if I can get them to work at all with this setup because it's very complicated with the eight uh, setups in there. So if you have any comments, please put them down below. You have questions. If you mess with this yourself or you know more about cellular and these gateways, please put a comment below. I'm open to... Um, receiving any kind of uh, feedback that you guys have and we'll try to learn this together and see what works out.